Welcome to the Raise Podcast. I'm Carol Barwick. We're here to raise your confidence and inspire your creativity. Each episode, we will have a different guest who will be discussing our Raise Word. The Raise Word is a word that will encourage you or empower you and at times inspire you to explore the word a little more for yourself. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Race Podcast. I'm Carol Barwick. Season three has seen us uh, looking at some really incredible words. Uh, Last episode was about music, and today we're going to look at the word collaborate with the brilliant Rhiannon Helgerson. Welcome, Rhiannon. How are you doing today? Hi, Carol. Thank you so much for having me on your podcast today. I'm really excited to to dig into collaboration. You are so welcome. Um, I think it's fair to say that it was kind of collaboration that brought us together, really. Um, we, we're we on a similar kind of path, and yet God is leading us in, in two kind of different ways as well. Before we dive into all of that and all that you're doing, particularly for in the Christian business world, um, what does the word collaborate mean to you? That is a, a loaded question, because I think... <laughs> Um, in the past, collaborate to me means that, um, or meant to me that one person brings something to the table and another person brings something to the table and they both get compensated for, for that. And then they separate and go on and live happy lives. <laughs> Whereas okay. now I'm seeing collaboration as more of um, like a, a partnership where you elevate each other and you strengthen each other and even if that means that you're you're sharing someone else's product someone else's service um that doesn't mean necessarily that you're going to get financially compensated for that but you're just elevating that person does that make sense absolutely yeah um interesting so two very different ways of looking at it from two different parts of of life it sounds like Tell us a bit about the the first one where two people brought something to the table and and you both got compensated. What was that in in like relation to? You? Well, in the past, um, I mean, I've been a business coach now since twenty twenty, and in the past, I've done uh, summits for people or um, I've done speaking engagements where it's been yes, we want you to have a speaking engagement. Um, we want you to share the summit we want you to invite your audience and we'll compensate you by I don't know giving you access to our email list or um financial compensation and then that's it that's the end of the relationship whereas in this last season of of life and a very recent season really um I've been introduced to this new way of collaboration which is where it is it's more than just this transaction between two people it's where you come together you in in intimacy and and relationship you want to strengthen and elevate that other person and lift them up um because you know that it's going to benefit and serve other people more than oh I'm not going to advertise you if you're not going to pay me for it um which is a, a totally different way of thinking but I've seen so much more benefit to that kind of relationship versus a transactional kind of relationship yeah yeah um I think the thing with a transactional relationship is there is an there's an expectation of uh it's it's not unconditional is it there's an expectation Mm -hmm. that something's going to come and by default a disappointment if that doesn't work quite the way that you think it's going to yeah. Um, whereas it seems that a real true collaboration, n- nobody, nobody loses, everybody wins because if you're prepared to come with a with a kind of right expectation and I would say humility, would you say there's a humility in collaboration? Definitely, definitely. Um, so I think if you come like that then everybody wins. But for some reason, Rhiannon, it doesn't seem that the world works like that. And I do wonder why. I really do wonder why and why it is that some people have really kind of 
found that collaboration is such a wonderful way forward. But for, for many people, it's not even on the table. Any thoughts about that? Yeah, I have many thoughts about that. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, <laughs> so I, th- I think that, I think one thing is like, this is the way we've always done it. Like, this is what a partner, like collaboration looks like. It's yeah. transactional. It's you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. And, but I think that um, there's also these mindsets that, that are attached to that. Like, um, well, I'm not going to give too much away because I don't want them to go and steal my thing and pretend yeah. that it's theirs. Or even like these expectations like you touched on that well I expect that person to do x y and z and if they don't do x y and z then I need to make up for that and there's just like an imbalance of a relationship an imbalance of expectations versus reality yeah um yeah so many things yeah yeah it's um I think it what you were saying about um it's a it's a trust thing isn't it I think yeah. and I think it's so difficult obviously coming from the side of being a, a musician and a, a singer and that kind of thing that whole idea of um you know into intellectual property and mm. things being out there for everybody and yet needing to make a living for it at the same time um that kind of collaboration can be so tricky I mean it's an absolute minefield trying to work out well you did this bit and you did this bit and so you know we're going to split royalties if there are any royalties and and that kind of thing how how do you find that um this new way of working and collaborating is working for you in what you're doing now I think it has just been such um, a shift for me because I've always been wanting to to like lift people up, encourage people, see them shining what in whatever way that they're doing, and to then have that reciprocated yeah. has been has been huge for me because in the past there's been an imbalance where I have like been giving and giving and 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 not really received anything back yeah um and so in this new way of of doing things it's been almost almost a shock really to see that these these women that I've like partnered with they will randomly send out an email to their list about an offer that I have or they'll post a a thing and and you are a great example of this as well because I know in the raise Facebook group you are always sharing other people's um services and offers and you're really trying to to bring people together because I, I truly believe that there's that um what I lack the other person has yeah and and vice versa and so together we become stronger um and it's just been a joy and the thing is when there's that synergy when you are partnered with someone the impact is greater usually the reward is greater you do less work in a way because yeah. you're you're splitting it between you um and not to say that that can't be messy at times there does have to be that you know if there is an issue you have to make sure that you are voicing that out loud and not just brushing things under the carpet because I think that's when things can get tricky and that's when people like become a bit like oh I'm, I'm doing more than you or you know yeah and 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 again it comes back to that trust of having that trusting relationship with someone where you can bring that to their attention be like hey I I feel like this could have gone differently um and and figuring it out rather than well I'm just not going to work with you anymore and then like leaving (laughs) yeah yeah it's um I wonder if people um steer away from it a bit because there is such a possibility of of conflict um the trust really does have to run so deep because you have to trust that even if things are are brought up in terms of you're not doing as much as I expected you to do or that kind of thing that that's done in a in a wise way and a way that is best for both parties um and that 
that can be a really, really tricky road to follow, can't it? I think wisdom and discernment is incredibly important. Um, and I would say that that's something that's I've seen very much in you and why I think you're you're able to collaborate and and share about collaboration in in that kind of way because you have that kind of level of of discernment what would you what else would you say you need in order to have like a a good collaborative experience yeah well I'm glad you actually mentioned about the wisdom piece because if the wisdom isn't there um it can be it can be quite disastrous. Mm. I've been, I've been in relationships where there wasn't any wisdom. It was just it looked shiny, it looked good, and I just went for it. And then, you know, we yeah. the benefits of that. And so that wisdom piece is like, okay, is, is this why? Is just taking that time to evaluate the situation, evaluate the person, um, but also, I know for me in in. And, and I'm thinking specifically about these relationships that I have with with three other women. Mm. Um, we actually come together every week um, and we we pray together, we encourage each other, we support each other, we pour into each other's businesses. Um, so behind the scenes, we're doing a lot of that groundwork where we're building relationships, both personal and business and spiritual. Mm. And and so the the public view of that is like yes you might see us together once a month or whatever it is that we're doing but the groundwork is being done behind the scenes yeah. i think that's that's so important that those foundations are laid before we then go into something full blown with each other or um and i think that's a that's a step that people miss often they're like hey let's work together yeah and then you go off and do the thing and and then the cracks start to appear and you haven't been prepared for it yeah yeah it makes me think a bit about house building and obviously house building has to be collaborative you can't um you know have someone saying right i'm going to do absolutely everything the walls the ceiling the plastering the windows and everything um but also you can't have a house without a foundation. You've got to have that foundation laid. And also, if you're going to work in collaboration, you have to agree on what that foundation looks like. Because to go, um, I, the old Bible story of the wise and the foolish man, if they had both argued over what the foundation looked like, um, nobody would have got anything done at all. Whereas, uh, yeah, it's um, it's a there's a lot to it, isn't there, Rianne? And there's a lot to collaboration in order to make it something that really works. Um, I'm thinking about um, a different type of collaboration and the whole world of social media influences. And um, I wonder how that works for people because you were talking about kind of seeing shiny things. And I think... Uh, that can often happen. You see somebody that you maybe want to in, endorse your product and you kind of say, right, okay, I'm going to get in touch with them. And um, there can be a real disappointment, even if they share it with their millions and millions of followers in that actually they don't really care about your product at all. And I think there's some there's some kind of conversation around how how important is your product to the person that you're collaborating with do you think that's important definitely definitely if you are interested in the product if you know that it's going to be beneficial to other people you're going to promote that in a different way than you would if it's something that you're not even going to use if you don't understand the product um and so I think that plays a huge part in it that the the hearts and minds of the people that you collaborate with have to be in agreement yeah. Um, because I don't think it would be as impactful if those two were out of alignment. Yeah. Yeah. You graciously talked about um how how I kind of do that in the in our Christian business women's group. I mean, I think the thing is that I just I love seeing what other people do and championing what other people do, whatever it is. And sometimes I have a great understanding and affinity with it. And sometimes I really don't understand it at all but 
it's then about seeing the, in our case, the, the woman behind the business and what she stands for. And ultimately knowing that, um, you know, what we have in common is that God is using us both and wanting us to do something like it, you know, in the world. And I know that uh, that's very much your heart when it comes to your business coaching. Tell us a little bit about that and um, and your heart behind your your business coaching. Yeah, so in my um, business coaching, I am super passionate about helping women to get clarity and confidence around the message that they are bringing to the marketplace. Mm. And so, um, and I've been, I've done things in two different ways so when I started off in business I went down like the, the secular route where I you know listened to all the big names in the industry and like tried to really copycat their um businesses you know like how we we're just taught to do marketing a certain way we're taught to do um messaging a certain way cold yeah. DMing all of the things I've done it I'm not proud of it but I've done it and then um I I came to this point where I was like, well, actually, how does God feel about my business? And actually, what am I, what is my purpose of being called to business? And so I, I went on this journey of um really trying to understand what it looks like to partner with God. Cause i I grew up a Christian, my parents are Christian, um, and I would have called myself a Christian. Um, but I didn't have like this intimate relationship with God. Like I didn't, I didn't know that you could hear his voice. I didn't know that he spoke to us in, in different things that he uses all of our senses. And so it was, okay, well, what would that look like in business? Mm -hmm. And so I, I do this thing called journaling with Jesus. So I write out my questions and then I, I, I just write out whatever, answer comes and and that was my beginner's journey of of incorporating like first of all hearing the promptings of of holy spirit and and asking him like how how does this work like do you really speak now or um all of that but also how does that translate into partnership in business because if you have jesus as your business partner then you can't really go wrong in mm. in my opinion mm. <laughs> mm. um and so that's that's one of the things that I help women do is to, first of all, like believe that they can hear from God, that he is speaking to us today and um, and then really helping them to get confident in who it is that he'd created them to be. And then as you grow confident in that, you can then present yourself to the world and be like, hey, this is the message that I have. And it's it's great to see that and it comes back to the collaboration as well because once you know that you are unique you've been created with a specific purpose and a specific message then there is no competition in the business world because there is no one like you even if you have a similar message to someone else you present it in a different way you have a different um, message you have a different background and so it kind of annihilates all of the competition and you can just complement each other instead of compete with each other. And I think that's that's also a key piece when it comes to collaborating, because then um, there isn't that like competing against each other, you know? It's great to collaborate with Rhiannon in this episode. Collaboration is really important to us here at Raise and working together. And if you choose to have a jingle for your podcast or small business, we will work together with you until you get the product that you really love. And it will give you a confident and creative brand identity. Do get in touch if this is something you're interested in. Back to the episode. Brilliant. Yeah, so you're talking about... Um, not competing and I think that's so important and you and the brilliant Sabrina Hammond uh was it your first podcast episode that I listened to about you know the idea of kind of false humility and how actually it it, it doesn't it doesn't serve us to be like that it's about truly wanting other people to shine and and being 
knowing who we are uh, in God and f- knowing that we're unique, which then enables um, other people to shine. It's that thing about, you know, being you can't be the only star in the sky because there's always so many other stars around as well. But um, but that uniqueness is something that's that's so important, but often f- forgotten, I think. And I think, you know, you were saying uh, it, earlier on in your journey about the kind of copycatting thing and and how you, you kind of weren't proud of it. But I think, Rhiannon, it's so easy to do that because you see a format that works. Why wouldn't you use it? Why wouldn't you use a format that seems to work? And, you know, often those kind of businesses are the ones that are shouting about making six figures and things like that. Well, isn't that in many ways what we all want? But actually what you and I do is we're presenting the business world in a different way, aren't we? We're saying, well, we can be successful, incredibly successful, financially successful and um, recognized uh, in, in the secular world. But it's it's a different it's coming from a different place isn't it tell me a little bit about um where you might have experienced collaboration in your kind of earlier life was there ever a time uh in in kind of childhood where you had a particular friend or something where you kind of felt like um you know you were in synergy with each other or or not maybe maybe the opposite (laughs) that's a very interesting question I you know looking back over childhood I think there has always been um an imbalance in my relationships like that there has always been that kind of like I'll be your friend (laughs) if you give me your lollipop or you know these like things where I felt like I had to jump through hoops in order to be you know included and appreciated and so it's been been a journey for me to have that level of trust with people definitely Hmm. and I wonder why whether then knowing that you have an unconditional love from God is going to be an even more attractive proposition isn't it because we've we feel like uh we have a God that doesn't it isn't transactional it's it's just love 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 and that again that's hard for people to get their heads around isn't it I wanted to touch back on you talking about like journaling with Jesus and the Holy Spirit because I think in the business world and and particularly in the women's business world spirituality is becoming such a big deal and so connected with um with business and and it looks different to how we view spirituality but Nevertheless, it's still there. And I always find it amusing when people say, you know, uh, are you are you a woo woo businesswoman? And I'm always like, I don't know, because I'm definitely I'm 100 percent spiritual, but probably not. I am not in the way that some other businesswomen are. And it's a really in terms of collaboration, that's a really interesting one, because doing things in a spiritual way is definitely different to physical and, and mental, isn't it? But I I know that y- you feel and I feel that for us it's it's a relationship, isn't it? It's not it's not kind of a, just an out there thing. It's a speaking to us personally about Rhiannon, about Carol, and that being known. And um, I think when you work in collaboration with with the spirit, well. It's something else isn't it it is it is and that being known piece yeah I think is huge because I feel like in in the business world but also just in the world there is this need for people to feel like they are known to feel yeah. like they've been seen to feel yeah. like they've been understood and a lot of the time we put ex- expectations on other people to to do those things for us um like we put the expectations on people to see us to make us feel like we belong um and a lot of the times people let us down because 
we are human and and it's not it's not in their capacity to make us feel fully whole like it is for holy spirit holy spirit and 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 god is the only in i truly believe that it's he's the only person who can see us and know us completely Hmm. better than we know ourselves um and so to be able to have that intimacy with him for him to be able to then be like okay this is what my perfect plan is for you why wouldn't you then go and follow it why wouldn't you then want to spend more time with him and see what he has to say about you and and have your confidence from that place instead of the confidence of how many likes you get on Facebook or how many listeners you have on your podcast because those are all superficial Mm. and yet when it comes to those likes on Facebook and the and podcasts and things like that that's often where you kind of feel like uh well I feel like my identity is is often in there and that's a very human feeling isn't it that I mean uh I want people to listen to the podcast because I I believe in in what we're saying and what the guests are saying and I want people to be in, inspired and empowered but I also want to see my numbers go up I mean that, that that's kind of part and parcel of it isn't it and yeah. I know that you've just done a or yeah I think you've just done a recent episode on on finance and that is such a a big one it's okay to want to bring the the money in that's part of being um in business because you want to keep it so it's I wonder how we find that balance between uh, the that recognition in uh, numbers, visibility. Please share. This is what I'm doing, and it's important. And and being known. Yeah, that's that's a very deep question because, and and perfectly natural because, like you say, I I have my own podcast. I have my own Facebook page. So. All of the likes and shares are are awesome, mm. um, but they are not. They do not define me as a person. Yeah, they do not tell me how much I'm worth. Yeah, they don't tell me how much of an impact I am making. My God does that. So yeah. my my worth and my identity is in Him, and. If I look at my, if I'm always checking my Facebook to be like, oh, has anyone? you know booked booked a time with me doesn't is anyone going to be joining my mastermind and and there's like this desperation of like oh are people watching me are like do people like me all of these things Mm. um that's when I know I'm like okay I need to check my heart and I need to be like bringing it back to the Lord and be like okay well I want people in my mastermind I want to make money I want to have an impact but I want to be serving you and pulling my identity and my worth and my self-esteem from you rather than the other people in social media yeah and I think that is what it is to be uh for us to be in collaboration with with God because at the end of the day God is saying well it's about it's about giving me the glory that's the ultimate goal here and you can make yes you can make money yes we'll we'll make sure that your your business works yes we'll make sure people know about you but ultimately uh that is what I want from you I do want you to to give me the glory and oh my goodness when I did the podcast episode with you I couldn't shut up I spoke for ages because (laughs) I had so much I wanted to say in terms of what God had done and and that's how it should be isn't it when you're in collaboration with someone and and it really works it's a really powerful thing isn't it um, without naming anybody, unless it's really appropriate, um, when have you been in collaboration with someone and it's just kind of raised the roof and taken off? So a, a physical person. Yeah, a physical person. As opposed to the spirit, as opposed to God. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that's what other kind of people are there? <laughs> <laughs> An animation. <laughs> Um, so a perfect example for this, and and if you check out my social media, you'll see it, is I work a lot with a woman called Susan Fleming. Mm. And we we got in touch um, 
we started working together in 2020 I was actually her client um and there was just something that that connected us like yes we I was a, a paying client of hers but there was just something um our, our hearts were aligned and our, our minds were aligned and there's just something that you you know you can't just put your finger on it and be like yeah it was this yeah um but we so I went through her program and it was awesome and then um we've kind of stayed in touch and then every now and then she'll she'll pop up and or I'll pop, pop up to her and like just be encouraging and then at the beginning of this year um we she asked me if I would like to join this little group that she had of, of women praying specifically praying for her business and I was like oh I'm honored to to come and help you and and be part of that and then as I joined that group um so there's four of us we call ourselves the fantastic four mm-hmm. which is actually we didn't call ourselves that it was my husband he was like oh are you meeting the fantastic four tonight I was like that's our name <laughs> <laughs> brilliant <laughs> and so and since then that the, that group has shifted from being you know looking after um, and praying over Susan's business but it's become all of us all of our different businesses and we are all praying and 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 helping each other and collaborating together we call it um covenant partnership mm-hmm. because it's like we're in it there's no you don't get to back out anymore yeah, <laughs> like yeah. obviously you could if you want to do but it's not this like instant like I'm just going to pop in and out when it suits me kind of relationship it's like we're in it there's this covenant between us we are united in in body soul spirit and so um and we've been living that out now for the last six months and it's just been a game changer for us um I know as as a woman in business with my own business and and doing things um it can be quite lonely being an entrepreneur and 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 doing things by yourself and so to be able to be surrounded by women who understand who who want to bring glory to God in their businesses and just being in the space with powerful women has shifted things for me totally yeah that's wonderful because you know for all we're saying about it being difficult and not wanting to compete and the trust and everything a good collaboration is really powerful isn't it It, and and it's a real it's a real witness to the to the outside world that when it when it works you know it's it's really it's important to be able to collaborate and and as we said at the kind of top of the podcast to collaborate not just in a transactional way although that happens sometimes but to collaborate in a in that deeper sense where you're really truly encouraging and championing um, each other on. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for all you do uh, in that sense. Um, we always have a, a challenge on the podcast. And so I just want to challenge people listening today to think about uh, either who you do collaborate with or who you might want to collaborate with maybe there's there's somewhere and you you think oh, they're just kind of too kind of too far out of my out of my zone that would never work but it's always worth a try they can only say no and it might be um that there's something really powerful that's about to happen that you just need to be brave and and go that little extra kind of extra mile in in working working to really work with somebody else and if you already do collaborate with somebody just taking the time to really recognize them and encourage them and thank them for um, the part that they play in your life as well. Rhiannon have you got anything to add to that? No I think that was beautiful but actually there is a there's a a story and I'm I'm not 100% sure if this is true Mm. but I'm going to share it anyway (laughs) Um, about some Belgian draft horses they are so strong they're like really powerful horses and um, I can't remember oh they they can pull like 8,000 pounds just one horse Mm. when they get paired with another draft horse they can pull 16 
uh, not 16,000, but 24,000. So it triples the wow. amount. And, and then the interesting bit is if they are paired, and that's if they're paired with a horse that they've never met before. Mm-hmm. So, but if they are paired with a horse and they train together and they are unified, they can pull up to five times their original amount. And I think that is such a powerful view of collaboration. Yeah. Because together we are stronger than if we are just one. Yeah. That's wonderful. Thank you. Yeah. So have a have a think about that. Um this week, who could you collaborate with or who do you need to uh thank and encourage for being in collaboration with you? Uh we have nearly got to the end of the podcast. So we get to the part where I write you a little poem. Yay. Um, (laughs) so just give me a few minutes a few seconds collaborate appreciate who's around what sound do they make and are they in harmony with you what can you take from them and what can you give how can you live together and work together building the house of your dreams What are the foundations? How do they need to fit? What do you need to do to make the best of it? You can both shine. What's yours is mine. Let the spirit flow so that people know that there's strength in together when we collaborate. There you go. That was so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. It's been wonderful. I know we haven't uh, known each other very long and that makes it even more special to know that we can collaborate in this way and share um, what we do together. So thank you so much for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's been a blessing. Thanks, Rhiannon. Bye-bye.